Maham and I crochet cute things. When I showed you my cats last time, I missed Jojo, so here he is taking over my workspace. Today we're crocheting some adorable bath charms. Let me know which one you're making in the comments, and the written patterns are in the description box. To make the photo card holder, please make sure that you have the picture that you want to put in it at hand because we're going to be using it for reference for the measurements. You can use any size of hook, any size of yarn. I recommend using a 4.5 millimeter hook and the yarn that I use can be found in my Amazon storefront which is in the description box. We're going to start off by making a slip knot. This is how I like to make mine. And now you're just going to chain the width of your picture. So the width is this length over here. So to chain, you just grab your yarn, twist and pull it through and just chain as many chains as you need until the length of your chain is the same as the width of your picture. I've made mine just slightly longer to have a little bit of space on the sides. And now we're going to start our row. So you're going to chain one which doesn't count as a stitch, it's just our turning chain to help us start a new row. We're going to skip that first chain and insert our hook into the second chain from our hook. And then we're going to insert a single crochet. To make a single crochet, you insert your hook into the chain, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Now go ahead and insert a single crochet into every single chain. And once you're done, you're going to have your first row. To start a new row, you're going to chain one and then turn your work. Now this is your turning chain. It doesn't count as a stitch. So you're going to be starting your next row from this stitch over here. Insert your hook into the first single crochet. Make another single crochet. And now you're just going to single crochet into every stitch to do your second row. Once again, whenever you want to start a new row, you're always going to chain one and turn your work. Skip the turning chain and start your next row from that first stitch. Now go ahead and do as many rows as you need until your back piece is as big as your picture. Here is what my back piece looks like after I've done as many rows as I wanted to. So this is my Polaroid picture and as you can see my back piece is slightly bigger than my picture and this is because I want to add a little bow decoration over here. So if you want to do it the same way as me, just crochet an extra row at the top. Once you're done, you're just going to fasten off. To fasten off, you can chain two and then cut, pull, and tighten. And that is your back piece. Now we're going to get started with the front piece. You're going to start off with a slip knot and then chain the same number of chains that you did for the back piece. So I did 11 chains for mine, so I'm going to chain 11. Then you're going to start your first row, make your turning chain, which is your extra chain one. Insert your hook into the second chain from your hook and single crochet. Now you can go ahead and do two to three rows of single crochets just to make this little border over here. I've done three rows. If you have a Polaroid, then three rows would be good. But if you have a regular picture, you could also do just one or two rows. It's completely up to you. Depending on where your hook is, if it's on the left side or the right side, you're going to start by making the border for that side. Regardless of whether you're on the left or right side, the steps are going to be the exact same. Every time you want to start a new row, always chain one and turn your work. And now we're going to be making the border for the side. So I'm going to be making the border as thick as two stitches only. So once I've got two stitches, I'm going to start a new row. So I'm just going to chain one, turn my work, insert my hook back into that stitch. And then the next stitch. And now my rows for the side border are only going to be two stitches. So every time I want to start a new row, I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and then do my rows of two stitches for the side of the border. Now you can decide how thick you want your border to be. Sorry, that's my cat scratching. And then you can go ahead and just crochet in those stitches to make your side border. So as you can see, that's how it's going to be. We're going to go ahead and do a little bit of math because I want to make the next part a little bit easier to understand because it is a bit tricky and confusing. So you have your back piece and I want you to go ahead and count how many rows you did for the back piece. I did a total of 17 rows. 
just calculate how many rows you need to do for this. So let's pretend I haven't made this piece right now. I've only done this. So the total number of rows I've got over here is 17. And now I'm going to subtract 3 and 3. 3 for the bottom, 3 for the top, that's 6. So I'm going to do 17 minus 6, which will give me 11. 11, whatever number you get over here, minus 1, is how many rows you should do for the first side. And then whatever number you get over here is how many total rows you're going to do on the other side. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. So what I did is I've got my 10 rows, and now we're going to stop this side and we're going to start this one over here. So let's end this side. To end it up, I'm just going to chain two and then fasten off. And tighten, and now we're going to start the other side. To start the next border, here's how to attach your yarn. Just make a little loop with it. And then insert your hook into the stitch where you want to attach it. And then grab your little loop, pull it through, chain one to secure it in place, and then just tighten the chain to make it near invisible, and insert a single crochet in that same stitch where you attach your yarn. And now you can start your next border. So I'm going to go ahead and do two stitches. You're going to do the same number of stitches that you did on the other side. And then when you want to start a new row, you chain one, turn your work. And same steps as before, just go ahead and keep doing the number of rows that you calculated. I'm going to be doing 11, and then I'm going to show you how to connect this border to the other side. So I've got 11 rows here and 10 rows over here and the main thing is to just make sure that your hook is facing this way so that you can connect these two. Now this time you're going to calculate how many total stitches you have in a row. So the total stitches that I have is um, 12, no, 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 11. I've got a total of 11 stitches and now you need to find out what the difference is between over here. Sorry, everything's a little bit crooked. I don't have much space on my desk. I've got a total of 11 stitches over here. Now we did two over here and two over here. So two plus two is four. So we're gonna do 11 minus four, which will give us seven. So now we need to chain seven to make up for these stitches over here. You could also just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If that's easier, we should have we should have just counted. So now with that number that you've got, you're going to chain that number. So I got seven, so I'm gonna chain seven. One, two, three, and seven. And please just make sure that your chains are not too tight. Otherwise what's gonna happen is that your photo card holder is gonna get all wobbly like that, like it's gonna get stretched up. So make your chains a little bit less tight. And then once you're done, you're just going to insert your hook into the stitch on the other side. So where your other border is, just insert your hook into that stitch. And then you're going to single crochet. Like that. Then in the other stitch as well, just single crochet. And there you go. You've got 11 rows on both sides now. So 11 here and 11 here. That was your 11th row that you just did. And now from here onwards, we're going to start another row and we're going to do three more rows or whatever number you did at the bottom. So to start a new row, once again, chain one, turn your work. Now you're going to insert your hook into all of the stitches and all of the chains, making sure that you keep count to make sure that the total number of stitches that you do here is 11 for me or the same number as the stitches that you did here. So it's very important to make sure you're not accidentally losing any stitches So just single crochet into each of them. I'm just working over my ends so that I don't have to weave it in later. When working into the chains, please don't get confused. Count them. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then those are my two stitches. So make sure you don't accidentally miss one. So insert your hook into the chain. Oops, <laughs> sorry about that. I really do need to work on getting a better setup. I just thought the soft lighting here was a bit better for the eyes. 
unless you guys prefer the brighter spotlight i could go back to that as well just let me know in the comments really quickly um back to what i was saying when you're inserting your hook into the back of the chain insert it like so i hope that's clear enough and then just insert your single crochet so you see this you're going to skip the two loops at the top of the chain and go right over here like that and there you go now you can just do two more rows for the border at the top chain one turn your work and just insert a single crochet into every stitch same as before and there you have it isn't that so neat now we're going to be joining the sides together so i like working in a continuous motion so i'm not going to fasten off or anything i'm just going to attach my front piece to the back piece line up my work so that it's all aligned then i'm going to insert my hook through the edge of the back piece i'm just going to slip stitch like that and now i'm going to insert my hook through the edge of the front piece just in the side and then the edge of the back piece as well and we are going to be slip stitching the sides together like so so one more time front piece back piece and slip stitch this is also going to give you like a little border in the front of your work and just make sure you keep everything nice and aligned nice and tight and you're going to go all the way around your piece so go through the edges over here this side and this side just slip stitch all around once you're done you're just going to chain two and fasten off pull and tighten and then you can tuck or weave all of your ends in and just make sure that you stretch it out a little bit slip stitches can be a bit tight sometimes so just make sure you stretch everything out as you can probably tell from the state of my desk, it's time to make some decorations. I'm just going to show you how to make a bow with yarn, if that's something that you want to make for your photo card holder. You're going to start by making a slip knot, and crochet bows are made out of just chains. So, oh, oops, sorry. So just go ahead, make a slip knot, and then chain a long piece. So you just go ahead and you keep chaining. Once you've made a really long chain, you're just going to tie it into a bow and then make the ends equal. So don't fasten off until you've made your bow and you've made the ends equal. This is my little bow. And you can just fasten off by taking your scissor and cutting. And then you just tighten. So just be very that when you tighten, this one's going to get a little bit shorter. So do a few extra chains. And there is your little bow. You can adjust it. Move it about until you get the size that you like. And once you think it's really, really tight, you can just cut it off as well. If you want to make the rose-like thing that goes in the center, you're going to start off by making a magic ring by wrapping it around your fingers like so. Grab your yarn, twist it up, grab onto this end over here, and you're directly going to chain one. Remove your fingers, chain one more, making a total of two chains and now you're going to insert three single crochets into this ring over here you could also do two depending on how small you want this little piece to be i'm going to do just two because i can see that that's a good enough size and then you're just going to pull the ring tighter and it's going to form this little circular shape then you're going to go into that very first chain that you made. It's going to be a bit tricky. Once you've got it in, you're just going to slip stitch like that. And that's going to make a little rose-like circle that you can insert in the middle over there. But to fasten it off, what you're going to do is you're just going to chain. I'm just going to chain one and then I'm going to cut. I'm going to leave a bit of an end. I'll show you why in a bit and then you're just going to tighten it and there you go so to attach your rose piece and your bow what i'm going to do is i'm just going to insert my hook through the photo card holder i'm going to grab one end of the rose and then i'm going to slide it through you can also just sew them on but i don't like to sew so this is the method i use in most of my projects and then once you've pulled one end through just place your bow wherever you'd like it to be grab the other end of the rose 
insert your hook through somewhere over here grab this end of the rose i don't know if you guys can see what i'm doing grab this end of the rose and pull it through as well so through the back if that makes sense and now you basically attach your rose and your bow all together adjust everything into place like that and then you're going to take these two ends make them super duper tight and now you can just tie a knot so you're going to take these two ends and you're just going to tie them into a secure knot just a regular knot tie once tie twice and just make it really really tight and then next i'm going to show you how to make the butterfly and we're going to get started by making a magic ring to do this hold on to your yarn wrap it around your finger cross it over till you see this x shape insert your hook grab the yarn and twist it up now, while your hook is still on your fingers, you're just going to grab this end over here and pull it through to make your first chain. So that's your chain one. Now we're going to chain two and three. And this chain three counts as our first double crochet. Now go ahead and insert one double crochet into your magic ring. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two to make a double crochet. Now we're going to be making seven more clusters into our magic ring. A cluster is simply two double crochets together. So this is what you're going to repeat seven times. You're going to chain two and then insert two double crochets into the magic ring. That's one double crochet and then another double crochet so that's one cluster two now we're going to start our third cluster so chain two yarn over insert your hook and go ahead and insert two double crochets into the magic ring so in total you're going to have eight clusters now i'm making my eighth and last cluster so once again, a cluster is just two double crochets into your magic ring and you have to have a total of eight. So just count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you should have chain two spaces in between each of your clusters. Now to end our piece, we're going to chain two once more. And then you're going to slip stitch into your third chain. So that's your first, second, that's your third, go into your third third chain and then you're going to slip stitch like that now we can fasten it off so I'm just going to chain two I like making it extra secure and you can cut because next we're going to be attaching our other color let's just go ahead and tighten this I'll go ahead and grab your other color we're going to attach it but before we do that I just want to show you what I mean when I say chain two space the space that's under your two chains is called the chain two space and the space between your double crochets is this one right over here. So you've got your two double crochets and the space between them, this one, is your double crochet space. So now we're not going to be working into our stitches, instead we're going to be working into the spaces. So your chain two space or your double crochet space. To attach our yarn into a double crochet space doesn't matter where you attach it you can go ahead and do this anywhere so just find your double crochet space and we are going to be attaching our next yarn color over there so i like making a little loop with it and you're just going to pull it through and let's tie a knot to secure it in place make it tight now insert your hook and pull up a loop like this and then you can just chain one there you've attached your yarn now we're going to be working into the chain two space. Now in every chain two space, we're going to be inserting six double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook into the chain two space, and insert two, sorry, insert six double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, and just push them back so you have a little bit of more space and six now in your double crochet space over here you're gonna slip stitch so insert your hook into that double crochet space grab your yarn and pull it through the loop on your hook to slip stitch so in every chain two space you're going to insert six double crochets 
make sure you keep count. And then in every double crochet space, you're going to insert a slip stitch. Once you've got your six double crochets, you're going to go into your double crochet space over here and slip stitch. I'm just working over my ends as well. So to slip stitch, you pull it through like that and there you've got your slip stitch now this is what you should have so far it's completely normal for your work to be curled up like this so don't worry so over here i have inserted six double crochets into my last chain two space and now i've got this area where i attached my yarn so to end up your work you're just going to slip stitch into this little chain one that you did at the beginning i'm so sorry about all the noise you're just going to slip stitch like that to end your work and now we're going to chain eight Once you've got your eight chains, what you're going to do is you're going to fold up your work like this so that the wings are aligned on both sides. And then you're going to take your chain and you're going to wrap it around your butterfly. So you're going to wrap it until you come back to the original place where you started the chain. So look at that, it's wrapping all the way around. And now you're going to find place where your stitch is and you're going to slip stitch into it. So this is right over here. doesn't really matter if you can't find the exact space. You can just slip stitch anywhere, but I'm going to do it right over here. Insert my hook through it. It's going to be a bit tricky. And now we're going to slip stitch. So just grab your yarn, pull it through the loops on your hook like that, and then just adjust your chain, making it nice and straight. And there you should have your butterfly. Fasten off now. To fasten this off, you can just chain one or two. It's up to you. I'm just going to chain one today. And then cut, pull, and tighten. And then you can weave your end in or tuck it in. Whatever you like doing at the end of your work. I'm just going to tuck this into the middle of my butterfly and there you should have the shape of your butterfly and you can adjust it you can stretch it out however you like to make a little antennas for the butterfly you're just going to make a really small knot at the at one end of your yarn so what i'm trying to do here just make it nice and small and then just snip it close like that and now cut however long you want your antenna to be i just want it to be like i think that big's fine so i'm just gonna snip it over here and then we're going to tie another knot on this end. Probably shouldn't have cut it. I should have left some space. It's going to get a little bit smaller. So maybe go ahead and not cut it exactly to where you want it to be. Just going to move the knot closer, closer, closer to the edge. And tighten, snip off a little bit more. And you have your antenna. And you're just going to take your hook and slide it through this little part over here. Just get your hook. Put it under the chain. Grab onto this. And there you go. Just adjust it to however you want it to be. I probably should have made it longer, but there you go. That's how you make the antenna. Next, I'm going to show you how to make the star charm. You're going to be making two pieces by following the exact same step and then attaching the sides together and filling it with stuffing to get sort of like a puffy star charm. You can use any hook size, any yarn size. I just recommend using a four to five millimeter hook. You're going to start off by making a magic ring. Here's how I like to do it. You wrap your yarn around your finger making sort of like an X shape, then you insert your hook, grab onto the yarn and twist it up. Then while the yarn is still on your fingers, you're going to grab this end and pull it through. And that's your first chain. That's chain one. Now we're going to be inserting five single crochets into our magic ring. So insert your hook into the ring like so. Pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. Now go ahead and do five single crochets in total into the magic ring here. You can pull this a little bit tighter to make it easier for you to work with. Once you've got five single crochets, we're going to be starting our first round. So pull your circle a little bit tighter, but not too tight. Otherwise, it's going to be hard for you to insert your hook over here. Go ahead and insert your hook into that very first single crochet that you made. This part always makes me lose my patience, but there you go. Now, and then we're going to be starting our next round, and in our next round, we're going to be inserting two single crochets in each stitch, making a total of, st of 10 stitches in round two. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my first single crochet, 
And since we're gonna be working in continuous rounds, I recommend getting a bobby pin and inserting your bobby pin through the first stitch that you do to mark the beginning of each round. So I've done that. Now remember, in this round, we have to insert two single crochets in each stitch. So in that same stitch where you just did your first single crochet, you're gonna insert your hook again into that same stitch, insert another single crochet. Now go ahead and in every stitch, you're going to be inserting two single crochets. Also, you can pull this tighter to make sure you're on the right track and to make sure that you have the correct number of stitches because stitch count is really important for this project. Go ahead and count the total number of stitches you have, starting from the stitch where you placed your bobby pin. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is the correct stitch count, and now I can start my next round. I'm gonna start my next round from the stitch where I had placed my bobby pin. So now our pattern is gonna be one single crochet and then two single crochets in the same stitch. One single crochet, two single crochets in the same stitch, and we're gonna do this all the way around until we have a total of 15 stitches. So go ahead and insert your hook into that stitch where your bobby pin was and do one single crochet. Don't forget to mark the first stitch of your third round by inserting the bobby pin through there. And now go ahead and follow the pattern. So since I already did one single crochet, in my next stitch I have to do two single crochets. I don't know if you can hear the ambulance in the back, but that's the sound that you might be hearing. And now we're going to do one single crochet, and then two single crochets in the next stitch. Now, from the next round, we're going to be starting the points of our star. So just go ahead and remove your bobby pin. Insert a single crochet in the, into that stitch. Now, instead of marking the first single crochet that you did, I want you to mark the very last single crochet you did in the previous round. Now, the pattern for the points of the star is single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, and single crochet. So we already have our first single crochet, so next we have to do a half double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that is how you do a half double crochet. Next we're going to do a double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, then yarn over, pull through two. That's how you do a double. Let's do another half double by yarning over, inserting our hook, pulling up a loop, and then yarning over and pulling through all three loops. Now we have to do a single crochet, and that is one point of your star. Now be careful that all of these stitches don't cover the stitches over here, otherwise you're going to lose your stitch count. So always push this to the side a little bit, make sure you haven't missed any stitch, and then in the next two stitches you're going to slip stitch. So insert your hook into the next stitch, make a slip stitch and into the next stitch another slip stitch and now what we did starting from that single crochet till the slip stitch you're going to repeat this four more times to get a total of five points for the star so let's do this one more time starting from the pattern in this stitch a single crochet a half double crochet double crochet, half double crochet, and to end it up a single crochet. And there we go. Now we're going to do slip stitches into the next two stitches. So make sure it doesn't get covered. Always check that you're not accidentally skipping any stitch. Otherwise, you might end up with not enough stitches for all five points. If that happens, then I recommend that you unravel your work and restart and be a little bit more careful with how many stitches you're doing. So now I'm going to repeat this three more times to get a total of five points. To check if you're on the right track, near the end, once you're done doing four points, just check if you've got three stitches left. So I've got one, two, and three where we marked our bobby pin. If you've got three stitches left, then you're on the right track. And now I'm just going to do my last point. And I'm just going to remove the bobby pin. 
and I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. So this is an example of how your stitches can sort of cover your stitch and then if you go into this one then you wouldn't be able to do two slip stitches and that would kind of mess up your stitch count. So always push your stitches back to find that one that might have gotten hidden away. I'm going to slip stitch here and slip stitch in the stitch where my bobby pin was and there we go. That is the end of our stitches and there you'll have your star. If you want to make your star a bit bigger, I have an extended pattern on my blog and the link is in the description box. You can follow that along. It's the exact same steps, it just has another extra round that you need to do before you start the points of the star. To fasten off my work, I just like chaining one more and then I'm just going to cut, pull and tighten. Now when you're making the other piece, please make sure that you leave a longer end so something long like this because what we're going to do is when we're attaching the stars together you're also going to need a plastic needle we're going to attach the plastic needle with a knot to this long end and then we're going to sew the star together like in the next clip to sew the stars together you're going to line them up make sure they're neatly aligned to the stitches that they correspond with and now to get a nice neat edge we're going to be working through the back loops only so let me show you what the back loops are. You've got your front loops and then you've got your back loops. So I'm only going to be inserting my needle through these back loops over here. Starting, I'm going to insert my hook through the back loop, pull to tighten, and then back loop, back loop, pull. I'm just going to start attaching my star together while also leaving a nice little border over here. All right, so back loop, back loop, and pull. So as you can see, the front loop is still right out here, but the back loops are getting stitched together. And make sure you're pulling it tight. All right, now back loop, back loop, and tighten. And this is how you're gonna go all around the edge of sewing it together. Once you have a little bit of space left over here, we're gonna add the stuffing. The stuffing, I don't really have any stuffing right now, but you could use any cotton or tissue paper or even yarn that you don't use a lot of. So I'm just gonna take some scrap yarn or a yarn color that you don't really use. I'm gonna use that to just stuff my star with. And the gray is probably not the best choice because it kind of sort of peeks out, but I'm gonna use it anyway. Just Fasten this off and then tuck the end in with the back of your hook and you will be all done. Now there's two ways to attach your charm onto your bag. The first one is if you don't have a key ring, so I'm going to show you that method first and all you need is your yarn and hook. But if you do have a key ring, then I recommend following the second method. You're going to take your yarn and you're going to be attaching it onto wherever you want your fastening closure thing to be. You've got it over there and now you're just going to make a little loop with your yarn and slide it through like that. And then you can chain sorry and then you're just going to chain the length that you want for your little fastening thing i'm not sure what to call it but i'm just going to go ahead and you're just going to keep chaining until you think it's long enough to wrap around your bag once you think that your chain is long enough you're, you're just going to bring it back to the top where you attached it and find another place to just slip it through i'm going to do it sorry that's my cat i'm just going to do it over here and you're going to slip stitch like that. It's just gonna be a little bit tricky because all you have are chains. And then you're gonna stretch it out. You can fasten it off. Oh, hold on guys. Once that's done, once you've slip stitched it back onto your star, you can fasten off. So I'm just gonna chain two and then you can cut your piece. Pull, tighten, really, really tight. And then you see these ends that you've got here? You can just tuck them into your star with the back of your hook. So I'm just gonna tuck it into any space that I find. So you don't have to leave it and you can just tuck it into your star. The other method of adding like a closure or a clasp or chain that attaches to your bag is to use a key ring like this. You can take this from any keychain or find it in a craft store. So you're going to go ahead and take the color that you want to attach it with. Find a little space to insert your hook. I'm going to insert it right over here. Find a little space to go through. And then grab your yarn, make a little loop with it. Pull it through. Just not through the stitches. And then you're going to chain the length that you want for this um for the chain that's going to attach to your bag and then once you have the length that you want you're just going to attach this to the key ring so you're going to put your key ring on your hook and you're just going to chain like that so it's going to attach your chain to your key ring and then you can fasten off you fasten it off you're just going to hold the key ring to the side and you're going to chain one or two depending on how secure you want it to be cut your yarn pull it through and tighten really really hard what i'm basically doing is i'm just inserting my hook through a chain 
at the back or at the front, wherever you want it to be. You just take your hook and you insert it through one loop in the chain and then you grab the end that you want to hide. Wait, let me just... And then you pull it through that chain like this. And this is basically just working your end through the chains so it gets covered. Do you get what I mean? And then you do this all the way around and then you can just tuck it in over here. Once you've tucked everything in, this is what it should look like.